So far, we've had three main variants identified and named the UK variant, the South African variant, and the Brazilian variant. The UK variant is fairly widespread across the country now. At least half the number of positive cases seem to be the UK variant in most regions of the UK. For the South African and Brazilian strains, um, of course, we only sequence about 5 to 10 percent of all positive samples. So at the moment, those numbers seem very limited. Uh, perhaps just uh, a few hundred at most. But of course, this may underestimate the number of those variants across the population. In virology, we try to avoid geographical or population-specific names for the virus, but we do have the initial period where we tend to associate a virus uh, from where it's come from, like the Brazilian variant, the South African variant, the UK variant. In fact, there is another name for all of these viruses. For example, the UK variant is actually 501Y.V1, and the South African variant is 501Y.V2. And the, the Brazilian variant is a B1128 slash P1. Okay, so there are non-geographic names for all these different variants, but in the press and in the media, it's just easier to refer to it by its original name, the UK variant, South African and Brazilian variant. People know what you're talking about. This is not a u unusual situation. Every year, the flu vaccine doesn't quite match all the different variants of flu that are out there. We see this uh, minor, major degree of vaccine mismatch you know, every year with the flu vaccine. Uh, the other vaccines are much more stable, so we don't see that so much of a problem with those vaccines. And of course, we get breakthrough infections with flu because of these minor, major mismatches with the vaccine. And of course, flu is just one shot, whereas COVID-19 tends to be two shots of a vaccine which gives you a more robust, longer lasting immunity. So overall, I think this is not a major problem. I think most of the vaccines will work to some extent. And the UK variant seems to be still susceptible to the mRNA vaccines by Pfizer and Moderna. And I suspect the Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine will still be effective. The South African and Brazilian variants contain similar mutations and they have shown a reduced um, sensitivity to the vaccines that we have. Eventually, the low level of transmissibility you might see post-vaccination, whilst the vaccine's gradually ramping up and starting to become effective, that may be less of a problem as long as a lot of people, or if everybody is vaccinated or has immunity from natural infection and recovery. I don't think that that is going to be a major factor in coming out of the major restrictions like the lockdowns and, the, and the, the high tier systems in the UK, but I think there will be an overall shift towards more awareness of social distancing and there will be less a stigma against people wearing masks just because they feel that they want to protect themselves. The tweaking of the variants can be quite quick with the mRNA vaccines. Uh, so Moderna has already started one in development for the uh, South African B1.351 uh, variant. With the mRNA vaccines and probably the AstraZeneca adenovirus vector vaccines, um, including the Russian Sputnik uh, and the, uh, the Janssen, Johnson & Johnson vaccine, they may take just maybe one to three months. The traditional vaccines like subunit and whole virus inactivated vaccines like we use for flu and the Chinese Sinovac, Sinopharm vaccines, may take three to six months to actually grow that massive virus in culture and then purify those proteins for vaccine uh, preparation. This may not be in time uh, for the licensing of those uh, specific variant vaccines for the second dose of vaccination program. I think it's very unlikely because they'll have to go through some fairly rigorous clinical trials So natural immunity, natural exposure to the whole virus with all its proteins will induce T and B cell responses to those proteins individually and offer you a broader range of immunity compared to a vaccine which only offers you immunity to the S protein uh, part of the virus. Uh, so we've seen from recent trials that the immunity offered by uh, recovered infection to COVID-19 in healthcare workers can be as high as 80 to 90% for at least five to six months and even longer perhaps as those trials are ongoing uh, to test the duration of immunity from natural infection. COVID-19 is less mutable than flu. So flu, we need the vaccine every year because it mutates very quickly, about five to 10 times as much as, as COVID-19 virus. Um, but also the flu vaccine, you only get one shot. 
With a two-shot COVID-19 vaccine with a less mutable virus, like the SARS-CoV-2 virus that causes COVID-19, the boosting frequency might only be once every two or three years, rather than once every year that we see for flu. But that really depends on the circulation uh, of any new mutations. And then you might need this sporadic tweak of the vaccine, uh, which can be within three months if it's an mRNA or adenovirus vector vaccine. So this, comp this, 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 this question will, uh, the answer will vary across different regions of the population. If you get vaccinated, it'll offer some protection. It may not be as much as the clinical trials, 90%, but you know, 30, 50, 70% is still better than nothing if you haven't been inve infected naturally yourself already. So I think there's no issue around getting the vaccine because it's going to offer you something rather than nothing. Um, if it doesn't get to those high levels of protection, then to be honest, um, there's nothing else you can do. So you may as well get the vaccine and try and keep yourself and everybody around you, you know, some level of protection. And overall, if everybody gets vaccinated, uh, even if the vaccine works to lesser or greater extent in different people, that will reduce the baseline of susceptibles that the virus can spread to and protect the overall population in that way.